Hey y'all, Sarah Ansbury here, and today we're going to talk about some contact point. Uh, we're going to utilize your body to think about that. So often the question becomes, should I take a ball in the air? Should I let it bounce? And what kind of makes those decisions? So think of your body, first of all, okay, as a traffic light. Okay, so knees to feet is actually your red light zone, so obviously we're switching it. Knees to chest is yellow chest and higher is green so if you are in green what does that mean attack it attack it hit it down okay if you are in yellow you have options okay if you are in red light zone you usually don't have a lot of options you may see us pros on the court attacking balls in our red light zone that is extremely difficult for the vast majority of people out there so what we're actually looking at is if I make my paddle in a forward position it naturally sits in my yellow zone if I go down like this that puts it in my red zone so as we're practicing our dinking what we're looking at is kind of looking at hey am I, I want to be in my my yellow zone now the more you're in your yellow zone you will see balls to attack much quicker and you'll start to generate more options from that position so let's kind of shout that out a little let's go so here's that's my red light okay so that I got my red light there's my yellow there's my yellow yellow and got into my green almost okay so as i'm hitting this so there's my red so i've got to probably dink that back now i'm in my yellow now i'm in my green okay so that's a down and then this is an up okay so as you're practicing okay yellow yellow so even as i'm hitting in my yellow i'm actually getting more downward motion from my dinks Okay, whereas if I'm back in my red, I'm usually going to have to hit the ball up or I'm going to go onto my heels. Okay, so what's important about this too, not only is you practicing the zone important, it's telling you where should you be going with your dinks. I want to get my opponent in their red zone so they don't have a lot of options to do that. So now one thing to think about is if I'm going to step backward, okay, so the mistake that people make when they step back is they're like, hey, I'm just trying to get it. I'm actually going to let that ball bounce and get back into my yellow zone so I've got time and space so I'm thinking about a height on the ball versus trying to struggle and hit a ball in my red zone. So let's practice that a little bit. Okay. Okay, I got my green. Okay, so I'm going to step back and then try to, so I still kind of came a little tight to that because my weight went forward. Okay, so back and then pop it up. Now I'm trying to get back in. A little windy, so it's tough today. Okay, so there's my yellow, and back, and back into my yellow, okay, and then now my green. So this has a lot to do with positioning, but this is one of the things that we want to think about. So if my opponent's hitting a ball, let's say a third shot, drop, and it's really offensive, rather than me trying to take a ball in my red zone, well, now I can pivot back, let it come up into my yellow zone, so I've got more time and more options. What we want to make sure that we're doing when we pivot back is that we are pushing our weight forward. So one thing that you're going to look at, if I go back and my toe pops up, that's going to throw my weight backwards and often pop the ball up. Okay. So recognizing that spacing is about forward, forward, forward. So very often what we're looking at is just in front of you. Now, one thing to notice, look back on this video, watch it again. How often is my head dropping down? We really want to avoid that. And that is a common mistake players make when, hit, when letting the ball get to their red zone. If I want to hit a ball in my yellow zone, okay, my head is going to stay up. Okay, so I can create that. If I draw my head, that's a trouble situation. So even if you're going to step backwards, I still want my head to be up. Okay, so I can control the paddle out in front of me. Okay, so even if I get that, so see, it may be a little behind me, but my head stays up, so I have better control of the ball. Okay, so that here's the thing. You don't have to look down at the ball to know it's there. It's there, I promise you. So it's okay to lose sight of the ball for a split second. But instead of looking with your head, look with your eyes. Think about your peripheral vision when doing this. This will also help you stay out in front in your yellow zone as often as you can.